blogs. So we've got one here, which um, I mentioned ESOL before, um, developing digital skills and teaching ESOL. It matters more than ever. This next one, permission to chat, that one was about using chat in online spaces. Next one, invisible assessment of engagement in online teaching and learning spaces. And that was another project that was um, funded by UFI as well. Um, meaningful use of technology. I think that was exploring the SAMU approach as well. And then this one, the last one, do something that scares you. Psst, we can help. I wrote that one. <laughs> I try not to write too many because this is about the this blog is about other is about other practitioners in the sector. But I wrote that one to encourage practitioners to come and contribute to the Amplify Fee community space. Whilst we're on the subject of uh, more practitioners that have been do maybe doing something that scares them, um, <laughs> or maybe doing something that they're totally comfortable with, but podcasts. So we've been doing, uh, I think we started the podcast in, oh gosh, okay, it's not been a year yet, I don't think, but we've already got 12 online. Um, if you listen to um, the radio, the Alt-C radio that we have going on, I don't know whether any of you have noticed the radio, the big, yeah, okay. Uh, <laughs> so that's our online as well um, for everyone to listen to throughout the um, the next few days and we've got a few of these podcasts on there too and one that is super hot off the press that's only just gone live as well so um so ones that we've got on there right now we've got save time with ai and that's where i'm talking to peter kilcoin from um teachermatic um and you can i don't know whether any of you have seen teachermatic you may i know you've only been here like a few hours you may have only just briefly gone past but go and check out teacher matic and speak to peter he is lovely super lovely and the podcasts are all only about 20 minutes as well so i'll try and keep them nice and short so you can listen to them on the bus on your break making a brew um except for i think ours is quite ours quite long lynn we ramble oh gosh surprise. we can chat for goodness knows how long um so <laughs> We've got um, permission to play with Sandra Smith. Um, Sandra Smith was one of our case studies, right? Um, from right. Coventry ACL. Yeah. Um, and then we've got the importance of pause, which is lovely, um, which is talking about the need to have time to stop and reflect. And that's by um, Joyce Wee Shen. And she recently actually did, um, two weeks ago, did a webinar for us about called folding slow on uh, ontology and it was about using origami and just having a moment to reflect on your practice and do something with your hands right um by the way all of our webinars are recorded and online so if what i just said made you go oh i wish i was there and i'd seen that then you can go on youtube it is online right now so you can go and see that all right okay so have a little look at our podcast and have a little look at our um, our blogs. But we've also got webinars. That's like the third strand of the community space. Um, as you can see up there, Joyce's was in August. We've got the next one, revolutionary thinking. That's very like think outside the box, very much about culture change. And that is um, Jason, um, who has been leading the, oh, I can never say it properly, Lynn, Red Redvolution. Redvolution, yes. Oh, I did FE Redvolution, yes. FE Redvolution Twitter chat. He ran that about a year or so ago. And I've heard on the grapevine, maybe through a podcast that I recorded with him that's going to come out in December, um, that he's going to be kicking that back off. So definitely keep an eye or ear out about that. But you can always come to his session on 29th of September. Next one is Digital Technologies on a Shoestring, um, which is fantastic I come from community learning where you've got like you know two pieces of paper to rub together and still have to embed digital literacies so I was very keen to um, have Debbie come and speak about that on 13th of October and then the last one is with Chris His is called, this is called the game is never won by standing in any one place for too long which sounds like a very a very Sounds like a, it's like a movie title, isn't it? A really long movie title. <laughs> but this is about um, decentralizing the classroom and not standing, as I am right now, right in the middle, in the front of everybody, in presenter mode. Um, again, another podcast with him coming, I think, in November. No, 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 October, because his um, webinar is in November. I have a question. Of course. Can you talk a little bit about offender learning and college-based learning? 
Yeah, what would so you yeah. one? I think I understand, um, but I don't know exactly what your members are doing or the different communities are doing there. But the college one, uh, I thought you did not do college one, so that's why I was super interested in college based. How uh, we do it's college and everyone. So the reason why this is one of our um latest graphics actually because we wanted to share um all the different kinds of areas different areas of the sector and that it's not just college so it, when people often hear the phrase fe they sometimes think of um fe colleges and not beyond fe colleges including um adult community learning independent training providers working in charities offender learning working in prisons um, so it's it's colleges and then some. Because I thought you had not in colleges, so that's that's great. But so what do you guys are you guys part or the members part of like the post events and or teachings at universities or do you go into university and do certain classes? Like I don't understand the model, but you can just help them with the colleges because I thought you guys were not in that space at all. Uh, we are um, we are in all different areas of further education yeah. um, and our members are in all different areas of further education and also HE as well, because there's ways, things that practitioners, there's things that practitioners in FE are doing that can also inspire those in HE and, you know, the other way around as well. Um, so we do encourage anyone from FE to um, take part in the webinars or um, to do the webinars themselves and then also come and, you know, take part and support their colleagues um, by coming to the webinars too. Does that answer your question? We don't go directly into, because we're online, right. so we don't go directly into um, the colleges or the prisons um, but practitioners and teachers, educators that work within those different areas um, are members of Amplify FE and they can be members and they can contribute towards the community space. All righty. OK, so this is a little bit over to you, because just for a moment, we would like you to um, complete. And I'm going to have to. Is this your computer? No, it's no, not. no, it's this. Of course. Okay. Um, give me one mo while I just present this. Okay. So um, we would like to find out if if you would um, how um, how you engage with micro CPD because we've been doing the Amplify the Community Space for a year now, and as you should you've seen we've been doing podcasts and um, blogs. My brain's just podcast blogs. We've even done Twitter chats as well. Um, and we've got webinars, but we would like to know what kind of things you really want to engage with for our next stage, our ne you know, as we go forward as Amplify FE. So have, just scan that QR code or you can join by popping the code in there, vvox.app 127-796-806. Thought I'd say that out loud if anyone is online and can hear me now my microphone is switched on <laughs> um can you take a moment to rate um the following CPD so which ones are your favorites which ones do you really like to engage with Let's have a little look. Thank you very much, everybody. Oh, fantastic. That's really good to know about the, the Twitter chat seem to be on top, which is fantastic. If any of you have heard, you may or may not have heard of UKFE chat. That's um, monthly on the third Thursday. Just written a blog about that. So go and have a little look on the Amplify FE blog about UKFE chat. 
um, and definitely get involved in that. And we also um, sometimes do um, chats as part of um, UKFE chat or we do chats on our own as well. We've got monthly webinars, podcasts. That's really nice to hear. Yeah, we've got look, those monthly webinars coming up. And then we've also got podcasts, which I'm trying to push out like monthly. Um, but I've had so much interest. They may end up being more than monthly. We'll see. Um, and any of you could come and chat with me on the podcast as well. Remember, OK, so if you're ever interested in doing that, do come and speak to me and let me know. OK. And just one more question, which is, what themes and topics would you like to see? And then after we've done that, I'm going to hand on over to my lovely friend, um, Lynn. So what kind of themes and topics would you like to see in the Twitter chats, on the podcasts, webinars? Is there anything specific that you'd like to see a webinar on? Anything specific you'd like to read um, a blog on? Fantastic. Coming up now. Oh, okay. Okay, well, I will leave that running so you can have a few moments to think and pop that, pop your thoughts in. And then I will hand back over to Lynn. Thank you, Chloe. So you've got a chance to look at the sector audit with Emma and Marin this afternoon in the main lecture theatre. Chloe has just um, briefed you on all the amazing community work. And the third strand of Amplify FP is the insights research. This is something that began in 2022. And at the minute, we are doing a consultation um, at events like this and other conferences that practitioners attend just to update it. So our insights research, this was the key research question. How can we design and deploy learning technology to best benefit learners who are impacted by the digital divide? And, you know, here we might be thinking of some of the learners that Chloe's mentioned, you know, adult and community learning, prison learning in particular. You know, there, there are many scenarios there where um, the kind of digital infrastructure that we're seeing in this room here today just isn't possible. ESOL learners, you might have people on very, very restricted budgets. So how can we do that? If you follow that link there, or there's a, a little bitly QR code, that will take you to the web page for the Amplify FE research. So you can check out what we found out so far. Um, so we have a research report, um, which, as I said, we have put together drawing on interviews with managers and designers from all across the industry, looking at digital skills frameworks and also community contributions from Amplify FE and things like UFI and also events like today. So the research report drew on all of those sources. And if you come to see us on um, our stand, which is turn right out of here and we're just across to the main windows um, you can see we've got some case studies because you know sometimes people like to read a piece of paper even in the digital world so you can come and take some case studies and so far we've published four main case studies and they are from learning designers and FE practitioners so talking right across the sector to teachers, to learners, to learning designers, to find out the strategies and the digital infrastructure and networks that they're using to help to try to span that digital divide for some of the most disadvantaged learners. And now, having put out that report, which is all coming up on a year ago, we're doing a sector consultation. So this is going to start with you today. So hopefully those viewing online will join us as well. If you go to VVOX, VVOX app, if I can say it, you want code 159-510-832, or you can also just scan that QR code there. And the first question we're asking you on that poll is this.
what are your learners' greatest digital barriers? And this can be anything. It can be to do with access. It can be to do with skills or support, social conditions, all of those things. So you're getting a chance to contribute um, to reinforce our research, maybe to rebut some of our research. It's great when you've done a piece of research that is significant as this report to take it out to the community and say, what do you think? I'm loving some of these. Confidence um, to have a go has been a really huge finding. So it's good to find that coming up. Adverts everywhere is not something that I've seen so far. So thank you for whoever online or in the room put that. So people finding that they have to, you know, maybe enable cookies and then an advert, you know, pops up and on a small screen, particularly if you've got people who um, have send, you know, learning difficulties, that can be really just so distracting and can entirely interrupt a change, um, a train of thought. Accessibility issues to do with actually getting onto the um, network in the first place, absolutely brilliant um, and overwhelm. And I think maybe a lot of the time we're finding from our reports that that's to do with, should I be on Twitter? Should this be WhatsApp? Should I get onto LinkedIn? And the choice being so overwhelming, it's very difficult and no data. Yes, some learners who might be um, in areas of deprivation might find they run out of data after a fortnight. So if they're doing an online course that's happening regularly, they just can't contribute. So thank you very much for... Um, contributing to that. That's absolutely brilliant. Um, next poll I've got for you is this. As experienced, I'm sure you are digital learning designers. If you could give one piece of advice to a new learning designer who is just starting, maybe they've got a new job for the new term and they are a learning designer working with learners in FE and skills in the broadest sense. So anyone post 16, what one nugget of advice would you give to people who are starting their digital learning design journey? I'm going to be quiet for a while because this is probably a longer thought and response. Good to see that nobody's replied and said, don't. That's very good news. <laughs> Find out what technology they're already using, brilliant, and what they need to take an active part. Listening more, I love that. Listen to the learners. Understand their motivators and their barriers, wonderful. Uniformity, absolutely, in that interface design. Talking about, you know, have we got different screens with the forward and back buttons in different places, different fonts? It might look funky to us. Wonderful. So some really good stuff there. And what I'll do is I'll leave that open, seeing as it is a slightly longer poll. And um, you can uh, go back to it when you've had a little thought. And what we'll be doing for all of these polls is that Chloe and I will be posting the results on Twitter when people have had a fuller opportunity to participate. So as I was saying, please do check out um, our research. You can find it on the QR code that's there, but equally come and see us on the stand. We'll, we can give you some lovely postcards and there's some in front of you here that will jump you straight through to all of those things. So join the conversation. As Chloe was saying, you know, we've got podcasts, we've got webinars, we've got the opportunity to take part in a blog. And if this is something that you love doing, please join us. If it's something that you've been wanting to put your toe in the water of, there's going to be a whole load of support for you. So join our conversation. So thank you very much for um, being here with us today. We very much um, appreciate it amplifyfe.alt.ac.uk is the address that you want and for the lucky people who are with us in the room I'm going to invite you to pull up a sharpie 
and take part in the community map. So I think, Chloe, if we close by you inviting people to actually do some proper analogue scribbling. Yeah, if you want to come and scribble on the map, then please, please do. That's why we got it, so that you can come and write on it. So far, there's a lot of my handwriting on here, and I know what my handwriting looks like. So we want some more of the other people. So if there is anything that you're involved in, then please come mm -hmm. and do it. Or if you're not sure right now, but you want to go away and maybe come back later, then you know where we are. So you, you know where we are. So if you're yeah, sitting in the room, room yeah, right the we're right near the T. Right if you are door. online, you will find a digital version of this via Amplify FE, which is called the Remixer. So if we've got you at a disadvantage because you're sitting at home, please don't let that stop you putting your hashtag on the community map. You can do that via the website and via the Remixer. With apologies to anyone at home who was hoping us to, for us to finish bang on time, we've overrun by five minutes but i think that's just we had so many questions so thank you very much for joining us thank you, thank you. any questions we are aware that we're, you're not quite through to lunch so so we've got a little you know time five yeah. minutes for any or or observations really and learn something from Effie as well. Mm. Very actively engaging the community. Mm. Mm. Thank you. We've got we've got to be where people are. It's yeah. no point, you know, putting up something and hoping that people come to join you. You have to reach out to people. But you know, you're saying from HE, we've had this conversation, haven't we, Chloe, two or three times today about that real blurring of the FE HE boundary. You've got HE and FE, you've got HE institutions putting on things like access courses, even in level three qualifications in some case. So I think it's a little bit of a false binary to say I'm in FE or I'm in HE. And then you've got people in FE that don't even realise they're FE, you know, like because they're in community mm. learning and they might not, or prison education, and they might not see themselves being FE because FE is seen as mm. just colleges. Mm you know so yeah it's definitely oh, totally not. lauren came to see us on the stand for a cup yeah. of tea earlier and she just said i'm a saint john's ambulance trainer am i fe like and we said yes you're doing vocational yeah. learning and you know you're you're situated in the community so if you have something that you'd like to shout about that you think would be of any interest to learners over the age of 16 that's to do with vocational learning with a digital bent please don't let us the fact that we're called amplify fe put you off yeah. <laughs> comments questions we'll be here for three days we will so if you want yes to and then come back and come and have a chat you know where please come and see us but we would love anyone listening in at home or anyone in the room here to do a podcast a blog because as we say we're not always good at shouting about the wonderful things that FE does. And here for once, there's a platform that you haven't got to go through. I was going to say TES, you haven't got to go through TES, but no, you haven't got to go through FE you News. You don't, you don't have to sign up. You can uh, you have a shout about your project. You can just come and Brilliant. chat on the podcast. Wonderful. Thank you.